I should do an introduction so people know who we are. Well, they'll know who I am. It is dark. We are sitting at a light in town going mothing. It's Laura from the Humber Arboretum. And driving is our special guest tonight of Robert. Let's go see some moths. So we're out in the, more in the country now. It's 9.50 p.m. And why are we going out at this time of day, Robert? So this is when the moths start to come out. And when they all start to emerge, they tend to be more around the uh, around ground level. And then later in the night, they disperse a little more. So it's best to get out a little earlier. Cool. So we're heading out now instead of later in the night for that reason. Um, so it's still a bit light out but soon it will be completely dark and we'll see hopefully lots of cool moth friends. Okay, so we are at our mothing location now. We have our nets with us and our headlamps. Um, and so, Robert, why do you like coming out to this place? Like what, why do you find it's a good area for moths? So this area I like in particular for moths because there's a diversity of deciduous trees and shrubs um. uh, as well as other plants in the understory of the forest so when there's a greater diversity of of trees and plants uh, especially deciduous ones there tend to be more moth species because the caterpillars of those species prefer leafy uh, plant matter nice. rather than conifers nice so yeah as we've walked here before on different nights we have seen a good variety of moths some quite small little species um but we have been lucky with some cool uh, silk moths. So last time we were out here, I saw my first Luna moth, which was fantastic. And Robert, you, last time, what did you see again? You saw an imperial a Luna, moth. An imperial moth and a Luna moth too, right? Yes. Nice. So yeah, it has a good diversity of kind of larger silk moths. And then we're hoping to find some sphinx moths tonight. Um, but of course we'll be happy just with all the little friends flying around. So one tip I give for when you're going out and looking for moths is of course looking at what's flying around you, um, in front of you on the trail, but also looking higher up in uh, the forest canopy. So if you see uh, kind of in the middle of the shot here um, on this tree, we have a species of moth called a pale beauty. So I spotted that, it was moving a little bit and I noticed it was a different color against uh, the leaves there, so it caught my eye. Um, so that's always a good way to be looking for moths too, is um, looking high up into the canopy. So often you can find uh, silk moths and the sphinx moths too flying a little bit higher up in the sky. Okay, so sometimes you find things that aren't moths when you're mothing. So we have a runaway toad. Off he goes. Okay, I think he's safe there. Perfect. So moth hanging out on the basswood. Oh, there's a cool caterpillar. Bob, I found a caterpillar. What do you think it is? One of the prominent caterpillars. A prominent like the moth. Cool. <laughs> Who's attacking? <laughs> Is that a gypsy moth? I don't know who that is. There's a moth attacking. That's cool. Oh, here's another one. A lot of flower. Oh my gosh, this moth. Makes me... Maybe I should catch it and see what it is. That's a good idea. Oh, it's a gypsy moth. Oh. oh, well. Very cool. This caterpillar. That's cool. Nice find. Thank you. Neat to see the caterpillars. Maybe you'll be a moth in a few weeks. Or in a long time, depending how long you're in your cocoon. Oh, it's so cool just watching them all fly around. It was really neat just seeing this basswood in bloom and watching all the moths come and hang out on it. They're cool. 
take a look. Okay, so in the net here, Robert caught a swing sloth. So we have our red lights on right now, uh, just to kind of help the moth calm down. We don't want to agitate it, but we'll just kind of wait for it to calm down a bit before we take a peek. So you can see as Robert's opening the net, he's being very delicate with it. The moths are delicate and we want to be respectful to these species. Oh. <laughs> and now it's just kind of flying around. There it goes. And off it went. Um, so moths are actually uh, very important pollinators. Often we just think of butterflies and bees as being the ones pollinating, but moths are often active too, going out and pollinating different That's flowers. Fine. There. Oh, cool. And one there. Nice. It might be a bit hard to see them, but they are there. I just got one in my mouth. It's okay. <laughs> Here you go, Laura. You can film. Oh, nice. Oh, that's good. Cool. So there's a little moth pollinating right here. Oh, it's so pretty, this little one, too. It's just got like some black spots on it. Wave snakes. Yeah. Tough little waves. Yeah. There he is. We got another one. I'm just gonna watch him for a second. There he goes. There we go. So, so what do you mostly get here? It's the wave and then the big poplar. Big poplar sinks. Cool. Excellent. You can see them too, like they have a real sheen to their eyes. There's a moth in my ear. <laughs> okay. And he goes. So now that we're a little farther into the forest, you can see that we have different deciduous trees here. Um, as Robert mentioned earlier, this is a good area for moths because a lot of the caterpillars use these as host plants. So they're eating and growing in this area and that's why we see them flying as adults. Now, if you want a better variety of moth or just a different variety, you can check out different habitats and you'll be seeing different species than you see here. Oh, nice boy. Oh, look at him, he looks so cool. So this is a big poplar sphinx moth. Wow. Wow. Aren't you gorgeous? So neat. So not only is it good to check out different areas for different species, you always want to be respectful of the natural areas you are in. So Robert, what do you find with mothing? Like what's kind of a good amount to go in a season or how do you vary it? I would say um, if you're going back to the same location repeatedly, try to go no more than once a week. Uh, sometimes there are other sensitive animals that require the quiet and the dark. So in this forest, for example, we have flying squirrels. So the flying squirrels are usually live in larger tracts of forest. Um, they're kind of down here because they don't really have anywhere else to go in southern Ontario. Uh, so it's nice to kind of leave the forest as quiet and undisturbed as you can as much as possible. Um, of course, I wouldn't have discovered they were here if I hadn't gone mothing. Um, <laughs> That's true too. <laughs> But yeah, so just make sure you limit how much you're going, uh, partly so you can leave the moths alone and leave the other uh, forest critters enough time to go about their lives. Cool. So Robert will verify, I cannot make this stuff up. I literally just said, is that a polyphemus moth? And by goodness, it is. Oh my God, it's so beautiful. So this is one of the silk moths. I can't, like, I have no words. It's just too beautiful and perfect. <gasps> oh, look at you. It's 
the big boy. So for scale, here is my net. Oh, here. which is off the back of it. About 12 inches or 30 centimeters across. Mm -hmm. or, and there's this moth. Wow. Fantastic. That's a big moth. <laughs> so let's see, I can't really. <laughs> it's okay. We got it. Oh, that's so great. We're on fire with moths. We are. Um, I saw one polyphemus moth last summer. It's the only one I've seen before. And this was Robert's kind of white whale of a moth for quite some time. It's one of his favorites. So we have a dear, dear spots in our hearts for the polyphemus moths. They're so cool and so beautiful. Love it. So we're not gonna disturb this one and try to catch it. Um, we just wanna make sure that we don't injure him since it is a larger moth and you don't want to get them bashed and battered in your net at all. So we're just gonna let it hang out there and do what it does best, be a moth. <laughs> all right, we are back in the car. I've done our night of mothing. We stayed out for about an hour and yeah, we saw a lot of great stuff. Um, I didn't think we'd see a silk moth. I was hopeful. So that was really cool to see our polyphemus um, and all those things. Um, what else? I want to say thank you too for Robert uh, for You're coming welcome. along <laughs> for this ride. Um, it's always fun to go mothing together. And um, yeah, we hope more people try it out and always be respectful of the places you go and all the cool moths you see. Oh no. Yeah, check yourself <laughs> for ticks. Always check yourself for ticks. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.